Well, we like to think of ourselves as a close-knit community on the snooker circuit, and this guy has been sorely missed, but for very important, valid reasons. Olivier Martil, great to have you back on the circuit, and I guess in your role as a nurse for the last 30 years, your life was turned upside down after Gibraltar, and you went home, and, and that's why we haven't seen you for so long. Absolutely, yeah. It was, uh, first of all, uh, lucky I, I could go home because I, I, I could take the last flight of, out of Malaga to Ostend in, to Belgium before hell broke loose. Uh, and then, yeah, from then on, it was COVID first wave, COVID second wave. It was all COVID that we spoke about. And you've worked in the radiology unit for such a long time, but of course it was all hands to the pump, as they say. And you were very much on the front line. Just explain what your role was at the very beginning of lockdown in Belgium. Well, I must say in April, when the first wave hit us, uh, I was supposed to be home and I was home because I was supposed to do the World Championship in Sheffield. So then I, I talked to my head nurse and I said, listen, I said, if you want any help, radiology or whatever else in the hospital, I'm available because I, I can't travel. I can't travel to the world. The world is postponed. So then he rang me back a few days later and he said, if you could help out on the triage that we formed for the COVID. So we made a second A&E, we had an A&E, normal A&E, and we had an A&E we made for the COVID patients or eventually COVID patients. And I've been there for 18 days. So you were right at the front line. You, I believe you were trying to work out people who were coming in unwell. Yep. You were the one they first came to see and you were saying, right, well, you've got something else and you might have COVID. So what protective clothing did you have? Because I've heard rumours that at one stage you were having to use some diving equipment because the relevant PPE wasn't available. Is that true? That's true, yes. I sent, I sent a, a photograph to Jan Verhaas who asked me to send, me, to send him one. Uh, and yes, we had to wear a PPE full uniform and then we had to wear a mask. And over that, we had a scuba, scuba diver's mask who filtered, that filtered the air, uh, plus two pairs of gloves. So that was from eight o'clock in the morning, let's say quarter to eight in the morning, till yeah, five, six, seven o'clock in the evening for 18 days. And, and how, apart from the emotional attachment that you would have had to the situation, despite your 30 years of experience and, and being able to distance yourself from that to some degree, how hot was that? You must have been boiling and desperate for water all the time. Yes, we were, but uh, the, only, the only time we could take off our uniform, our PPE uniform, was to go to the toilet. Uh, because you are not in a sterile environment anymore. You, could, you, could, you have COVID virus all over the place. So you, can just, you can't just take it off and have a sip of water or Coke or, or, or whatever. So you have to be very careful. Um, and once you left the place, left the premises, left the ward, then you have to take a shower, change clothes. So you, you won't do that three, four times a day. You just do that when you leave to go home. It, it, it sounds like you had to pour your heart and soul into that role. And as the months went on, did you start to find those long days and the pressure of the situation really draining emotionally and mentally? Uh, it drained me, yes, emotionally and, and yes, uh, mentally also, but also physically. I lost, I lost a few kilos. Uh, through sweat? Through sweat uh, during COVID, during triage period, but also afterwards, uh, because once the first wave went down, then all the operations and all the surgeries who were postponed then entered the hospital to have surgery, to be treated. And then after that, we had the second wave. So in fact, for us, it was not up and down and up and down. It was up and it's, it stayed up until now, because now the second wave is hopefully nearly over. But then again, we have postponed surgery who will still come in. So this is going to end probably at the end of January. And hopefully we won't have a third wave. So you have probably hardly had any days off for the whole of 2020. Well, I hardly had a day off in that sense that I didn't work every single day because it's physically and mentally not possible for no one. Uh, so I tried to rest when I could, when I was home. Um, and, and, and yeah, basically it's you, you, put, you put your mind on, on, on zero and you just go for it. You have to, it's your job. You've chosen for it. I've chosen for that 30 odd years ago when I was a student as a nurse. So, or you do it or you don't. You can't do it half and half. 
Well, it, 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 you're, you're giving a very modest version of events because I think it's clear for so many people from so many different countries that the, the medical community around the world have gone way above that which they signed up yeah. to do. Yeah. So how did you manage to get yourself in a position where we could welcome you back into the snooker community for the UK Championship? How, how have you managed to get some time off? Well, to be fair, I just went to my head nurse and I said, listen, I said, you couldn't let me go in August for the World Championship. And I was so disappointed because it's the first one I would have missed and I have missed in 11 or 12 years. So I said, now the UK is coming up. I've received a staff letter for the UK and I've just stamped my fist on the table and I don't do that very often. And I said, you have to let me go because this is for me more than, than vitamins, more than, than whatever. So I need that to be able to carry on if we should have a third wave. And he understood that and the colleagues understood that. So I had to swap a few shifts to be able to, to be here for that whole period. Uh, so yeah, when I, when I go back, then it's, it's, it's straight back in. But I'm here and that's the main thing. Well, it's, it's almost as if, I know this is going to sound a little bit cheesy, but it's not meant to. Snooker here in Milton Keynes over the 10 or 11 days, this is your medicine. It's, it's my medicine, it's my holiday, it's why I, I, I enjoy to do, it's what I need to do to recharge my batteries. That and Tenerife every single year. Well, I, th I think you're more than allowed a trip to Tenerife when, when, uh, when circumstances uh, mean that you can do that safely. And what a bonus then to come over at the end of a year where you've, you've put so much on the line emotionally for your country and, and for everybody back home. Mike Ganley, just 10 minutes ago, has informed you yeah. that you're doing the final. Yeah. You're, you'll, be, you'll be the one overseeing yeah. the moment when this trophy gets lifted. So what a, what a great bonus. It's absolutely unexpected. I've been away for nine months. Uh, I didn't know what to expect. First of all, the venue. Second one, how, how was the recep reception going to be? Uh, but the reception was splendid by everybody. Absolutely. I'm, I'm delighted. Uh, and yeah, um, yeah, cherish on the ice cake is, is I'm doing the final. Hey, listen, I know, I know you've stepped away for a little bit for very good reasons. Class is permanent, Martial. There is no doubt you're going <laughs> to nail it. And just finally, on behalf of the guys in the press room, uh, those of you who follow various uh, snooker journalists online may be aware that Olivier picked up a nickname, not of my doing, in India. Somebody introduced him as the Belgian truffle. Correct. Now, this, this goes nowhere close to displaying our pride of what you've done. But on behalf of the snooker journalists, as the Belgian truffle, we thought we'd better give you some. So if you're feeling a little bit tired before the final, fire down a few chocolates and we really hope you enjoy a fitting climax to the end of a year where you have gone way above and beyond. Can't shake your hand, let's do an elbow. Olivier Martil, everybody, when you watch the final, spare a moment to think about what this guy has done for Belgium. And, uh, and uh, you know, it's, it's gonna be an emotional occasion for all of us. Great to have you back, big man. Thank you very much indeed.